Hi, I'm Jay. I made this for my son using MDF, some casting resin, and spray paint. And of course, a computer controlled router. I'll show you how I did it. In the first two videos, I showed you how to design the digital files and convert that to G code. In this video, I'll be showing you how to run the G code, in my case, on a Maslow CNC using the ground control software. So, this is ground control, the software that's used to control my Maslow CNC machine. You can see its current location, inches or millimeters, and essentially with this we can maneuver the current position of the sled. So if you want to move five inches or millimeters, you can change it. Um, you set the distance and then you push the button in the direction you want to go, and you'll see it starts moving down, and it's moving down five inches. So, I am attempting to place this bit directly on this little pencil mark on my board because my pencil mark is in the center of an area that has um, you know a diameter of eight inches so my poke ball will fit within this area it's a little bit closer to the corner of a board than i would like but it actually worked out okay here so once you get it positioned where you want to start you need to open the g-code file and load that into your software Go to Actions, go to Open File, or um, double click, and you have it. Now it'll just appear somewhere, and you want to define the home to be wherever you moved your router to. So you just hit the Define Home button, and it'll move the origin of your G code to right at the home. Then all you have to do is get the z-axis zeroed correctly. Um, it might already be done if you've done this already. Otherwise, you can say, hey, I want to raise or lower this thing a certain number of inches or millimeters. Um, and once you have it where it's just above the top of your surface or right touching the top of your surface, you can hit define zero, and that'll say, okay, this is the zero. Then you can say, hey, save this and raise to a traversable height and hit done. Okay, and at that point, you're ready to hit the big green play button, and that'll play your G-code and cut things out, which takes a while. Um, you can watch what the G-code is doing. You can watch the position that your router is currently at, and at this point, you really just have to babysit it as it cuts things out, and you'll see the little X move around as it cuts things out. You can see how far you are done and what the current location is. If you need to stop something, you can hit the big red stop button. All of the following video where the router is moving is playing back at 16x real speed. Here you can see the router is doing the pocket operation for the first pocket at the top. This is a lengthy procedure. The router is actually going much slower than it's shown in the video here, and mostly you're just sitting back and watching it, monitoring, making sure nothing's getting caught, nothing's breaking. Um, I wouldn't leave this router unattended. You might sit on the other side of the room and do something else, just keeping an ear on it, but you definitely want to be close enough to be able to shut the power down if things go wonky. I have jumped ahead to near the end of the procedure, where we are doing the profile operation to cut out the poke ball. The sled is getting a little close to the corner of this board. Everything worked out fine, but I had my finger on the edge here just to make sure it wouldn't start wiggling off to the side. Normally, you'd be cutting things out a little bit near the center of your workpiece. So here you can see the final part, and it's still attached to the board by these tabs, which you can see in the back view a little clearer. Now that the CNC machine is done cutting out the part, we have a lot of hand finishing left to do, which I'll show you in the next video.